Okay, I will start sharing my screen now. Oh, please let me know if you can see my slides. You can just press plus on chat or use the emoji in Zoom, thumb up or, yes, we can see. Fantastic, so let's get started then. So welcome to my Scrum versus Kanban webinar. So the agenda of today, I will spend one, two minutes talking about myself, then we will learn about Agile. And I know some of you have been to my previous webinar, so I talked a lot about Agile, but for new people, I believe it's important to know about Agile Umbrella first before moving to the main part of this webinar, which is Scrum and Kanban. Then I will provide you a summary. And as always, we will have a Q&A at the end of the meeting. So you will be able to unmute yourself and ask your question directly or just place it on the chat. Now let's speak about myself a little bit. My name is Aina Alive. I am an Agile coach and been to Agile environment for the last 10 years. And I started as an electrical engineer. That was my first degree. I pivoted my career more than five times until I figured out that servant leadership is the field where I belong to. And I've been a servant leader way before and I discovered this term, actually. So I have two degrees, as I told, uh, master's engineer is my first one, and BA in Canada is my uh, second one. I was a TED, TEDx speaker, but uh, the funny fact about my TEDx speech, I was the first uh, speaker. So when I presented, I was told that unfortunately there were uh, some technical uh, difficulties, and unfortunately they had just a video with me without audio, so they wouldn't be able to post it on any social media. So kind of like spoke at TEDx, but I don't have any social proof. So by the end of this year or the next year, I am planning to do it uh, one more time. I am a Women in Tech ambassador. I just started sharing my story about uh, how I entered the tech world without knowing how to coach uh, via leadership position. And I appeared uh, that uh, so many people like myself uh, believed uh, that uh, you need uh, to code uh, or to be very technical to work for tech. And it uh, took me many years to realize that I can be, for example, a project manager or a product owner or any other leadership role to work for tech. I don't need to know how to code. So for many people, it uh, was uh, the, the same miracle, I, I would say, to realize it. So I kept talking more and more about it. And eventually I was invited to one meeting and I was introduced as a woman in tech ambassador. And me, woman in tech, I even don't know how to code, but that's how people saw me. And I started to talk more and deliver to webinars like today about how you can enter the tech world without learning how to code. So three fun facts about me. I am literally allergic to ice, and uh, that's why I couldn't live in Montreal, uh, one of the most uh, beautiful cities I ever visited, but super cold in uh, winter. I lived in three countries in uh, one year, so it was the Maldives, uh, Ukraine, and uh, Canada. And uh, coffee makes me sleepy, and it's true. When I sip Coffee, it may, I fall asleep right away, even if I'm in a workplace or during my presentation. So I, I never drink uh, coffee. When I present a work, I'm a very much tea person. So I have like 25 bags of <laughs> different sorts of tea in my uh, room. And uh, I'm finalist of Immigrant Entrepreneur of the Year in uh, Canada and also been featured in a few magazines. So why I am delivering this webinar and why should you trust me? So I am Kanban certified by Kanban University. I also have a professional Scrum Master certificate and a child certified practitioner from PMI. And some people ask me about the certification. So in Canada, PSM and Scrum Alliance certificates were the most popular for the last, I would say, like three, five years, but uh, this year I started uh, seeing a positive tendency moving to PMI 
ACP Agile Certified Practitioner. I've got uh, two calls uh, from the recruiters just last month, and uh, they asked if I have a PMI ACP certificate. And per personally, I value PMI ACP certification way more than a PSM one. So it's a great uh, tendency that recruiters started to recognize this certificate. But on the other hand, it's uh, bad news for you guys because the preparation for PMI ACP takes uh, way longer than for PSM. It's way more serious certificate and unfortunately costs more than PSM. But that's about certification. And let's talk about uh, what Agile means, as I promised. And maybe let me give you some history about it. Uh, so let's move back to the ancient time and talk about the uh, first uh, revolution, which is the agricultural revolution. So you know that a long time ago, people kept uh, wandering and uh, hunting to provide food for themselves and their families. But eventually, they learned how to plant crops and uh, herding animals. So it changed the tendency in uh, the society and uh, work. So that's how agricultural revolution started. As a result, people started wandering less and uh, started living and uh, working in uh, the same place. Many, many years later, it was uh, another revolution, which is industrial revolution. So people learned how to build uh, factories and uh, how to build uh, tangible projects such as uh, houses, uh, bridges, uh, whatsoever. So they needed uh, manual workers and started moving from agriculture to the industrial fields. And that meant that people started living fields and build bigger cities and live in these bigger cities. But what was common is that the work was basically manual, uh, didn't require much intellectual work. You needed to have uh, muscles and to just be a hard worker to provide the results. And as you know, if you work physically, you are not very much motivated. You have a fixed price for hourly. And I assume in Canada, it's about $14, $15 hourly, but it doesn't matter how hard you work. It's still like $14 or $15 per hour. So what is the motivation for you to work harder? If you work harder at the end, you will get even more work and be more tired at the end of your work day. So that's why managers used the micromanaging style, being kind of like following their employees and being the supervisors and kept pushing them to work harder because it was the way people worked. So the same was if we wanted like to build a city in general or if we want to build a house again. People are not motivated to get extra work because we would be just extra tired. So I mean, like this micromanaging style makes sense for some projects which require physical work. But um, when we entered the third major revolution, which is the IT revolution, and we pivoted from muscle work to knowledge work, it became impossible you know, to be motivated by uh, fear because the work became more and more intellectual, more and more uh, creative, and we needed more collaboration compared to physical work when you just can work in tediously and individually without much uh, collaboration. So it, it was a demand on changing the uh, work style. And uh, this is how Agile appeared to, to our lives. So, for example, industrial work was uh, visible, the work was stable, it was emp emphasis on uh, running things, it was like more structure and fewer decisions and uh, focus on the right answers compared to a uh, knowledge work, IT work, when we build intangible work projects, meaning work is uh, invisible and work is uh, changing, the requirement is changing and uh, what's more, we are building the projects or products nobody else built before us. So we're kind of like a pioneers. And if we focus on the right answers, we are not able to be a pioneer in our world. So 
What agile means basically, instead of saying I can't because nobody else did it before me, so I don't have a blueprint and I don't know what to do about it, we say, how can I? So agile is, first of all, it's a mindset. It's not a framework. Agile is a mindset, a set of values and uh, principles, which uh, helps us to be productive and creative at workplace. It means iterative and incremental approach, also empowered and uh, collaborative teams, continuous feedback, inspect and adapt, and uh, faster realization of value for clients and uh, continuous delivery, meaningful work to our clients. And business agility, like, uh, you know, maybe 20, 30 years ago, it was uh, the big who ate, uh, the small, large corporations ate, uh, the smaller ones. Then it was the fast is the slow, and now it's adaptability wins over rigidity. And why is agile? Why businesses need to go to this risky approach? So because first, what businesses are return on investment oriented, and we help them to increase return on investment ROI by making continuous flow of value our focus. We also deliver reliable results by engaging customers in frequent iterations and shared ownership. Also, we expect uncertainty and we embrace uncertainty and manage it uh, through iterations, anticipations, adaptations. We are open to fail fast, but learn from our mistakes. We unleash creativity and innovation by recognizing the individuals are the ultimate source of value and creating an environment where they can make difference. We boost performance through group accountability for results and shared responsibility for team effectiveness. And we improve effectiveness and reliability, which we just mentioned, bias, situationally specific strategies, processes, and practices. And it's just more fun to be agile rather than putting your heads down all the time and keep working and being serious about results and feeling like a robot and work without sharing personal feelings and without even like feeling that you work with the team rather than you are just working individuals putting together closely and sitting next to each other and work. Now it's just better from the human perspective to have this creativity, fun environment and collaboration so we can produce meaningful products and to make our customers happy. So at the end, everybody's just happy at the result. And also being agile means to be prepared for the unknown, especially nowadays when COVID hit out of blue. So it appeared that not many businesses were prepared to this black swan. And I am referring this term to uh, Nassim Taleb's famous book, The Black Swan. If you didn't read it, I highly recommend to read. So being agile means to be aware of, uh, be of black swans. It means uh, be ready to react fast, fast, sorry, act proactively, look into the future, keep up with the trends, the experiments, and uh, fail fast, learn continuously, and just be awesome, as I said. Now, four principles of the Agile Manifesto. First of all, we value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. It doesn't mean that processes and tools are not important. We are just talking because if we just talk, we would never be able to deliver a product. But interactions and collaboration between individuals are preferable over tools and processes. Next one. Working software over comprehensive uh, documentation. Again, we are having just enough documentation. We still need to document some processes to document uh, lessons learned uh, because, uh, for example, the new person come to the team or to the organization. So how they would know what happened before? Uh, definitely, we are coming back to the first one, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So you need to interact a lot. But before interacting, it always would be useful to go through some recorded lessons learned and uh, what uh, happened before rather than keep taking time uh, from uh, busy people, from leadership or teammates to figure out what you could document in advance. But uh, again, working software is our priority. We are 
not uh, leaning to uh, bureaucracy and we have just enough documentation, but still have it. The third one, customer collaboration over contract negotiation. So an example, I like this example with my uh, website when I needed uh, to create the website for my business. So definitely I didn't know what I want. I just uh, wanted a website where my customers can come and book my consultations or book my future webinars. So, but you see like this is a very broad request. So we had a contract, but at the end, uh, I wasn't satisfied with the result because it appears that it's not what I wanted, but I didn't know what I wanted, so I couldn't properly describe it. So I couldn't complain because we didn't have like a good initial agreement, but this is where this item for the manifesto came from, customer collaboration. So because, again, our customers don't know what they want, especially talking about the digital project. So it's our role as an organization to figure out what they want and how we're supposed to do it only by customer collaboration, uh, providing the updates and soliciting the feedback and uh, see if the customer is satisfied or not and uh, adjust on the fly. That's how it goes. And the last one, responding to change over following a plan. So definitely, Plan is good, and I am coming from the project management background. So without a plan, we would be in chaos, but responding to change, responding to feedback is way more important than following the plan, especially if the plan doesn't work anymore. So briefly about 12 principles of agile methods. So as I told, customer satisfaction is a key. An agile welcome change, deliver frequently, working together, being motivated as a team, working face-to-face. -face, and I know it's challenging when we work online, but uh, we have so many tools such as uh, Zoom and you can see me right now. So it's not like real face-to-face, -face, but still better than uh, being offline. Uh, working uh, software, again, we spoke about it uh, during the Agile Manifesto principles. Uh, Constant pace, uh, good design, simplicity, self-managing, and to uh, reflect and to uh, adjust. So these are the principles. And now we are slowly moving on to Kanban and Scrum. So I know for uh, many who are not familiar with Agile, unfortunately, Agile started being equal to Scrum. But as you can see, the umbrella, no, Agile, the mindset and methodology, and Scrum and Kanban are frameworks. And since we are talking about uh, Scrum and uh, Kanban, again, Scrum and Kanban are not rivals. In, it's not uh, Scrum against Kanban or Kanban against Scrum. Now, these are lightweight approaches under the Agile umbrella. And you see there are other approaches less popular, like, for example, extreme programming, feature-driven development, test-driven development, continuous delivery, continuous integration, lean software development. So guys, if it's your first introduction to Agile, Scrum, or Kanban, you can Google this terminology later. If you don't know any of this, it's fine. It's just an introduction to the Agile world, and you will get these slides at the end. So if you're interested to learn more, just Google them later, or maybe in a few months, I will uh, deliver another webinar, for example, on Lean Software or Scrum of Scrums or any other frameworks. So you see it's divided uh, between lightweight approaches and uh, fuller approaches. And for example, if we're talking about Scrum and uh, Kanban, we can introduce Scrum or Kanban just to one team, just to like small organization or like a startup, and it's gonna work. And if we talk about, uh, Scaled Agile Framework, Agile Project Management, uh, Scrum at Scale, Large Scale Scrum, and uh, the others, they are not lightweight and they are created for large uh, enterprises. So what is Scrum? Very briefly, I like this picture. And if you've been to my previous webinars, uh, you You saw this picture before, and I just got a message if I am sharing my screen. So guys, do you see my slides? Or I've been just kept talking with no slides. 
please message me on chat. We can see the slides, okay, thank you. Awesome, thank you. So probably, Anis, it's something on your end because the other can see them. Awesome, so let's move on. So uh, what, what I like about this picture is that it's written start and uh, finish and uh, in Agile and uh, Scrum, the purpose is to finish the work, not to, to start it. And the Scrum framework, very briefly, it looks uh, this way. So it's very prescriptive. We have a team of um, three roles, and it doesn't mean three roles, it doesn't mean three people, it's three roles, a product owner, a Scrum master, and to the team themselves, meaning uh, developers, uh, testers, or whoever else uh, we have in this uh, team. We have sprint iterations, meaning we choose a time frame from one week to four weeks uh, maximum. And to, during this uh, time box iteration, we are planning the work and we need to deliver this work at the end of the sprint. We also have uh, ceremonies uh, during uh, this uh, time duration, let's say two weeks, two weeks are my uh, favorite, but it doesn't mean you have to follow what I prefer. Because one week is too short, like from my uh, opinion, you won't have time to code and to, to test and to showcase the product. Three weeks, it's um, kind of uh, long and uh, boring. And I feel like uh, there's some piece of work could be delivered in uh, two weeks rather than three weeks. So we can solicit the customer feedback uh, faster and be able to adjust faster and to implement this uh, feedback. But again, it's really up to the organization, it's up to this team and up to the work you are doing. So that's why one to four weeks uh, iterations are preferable. We have a product uh, backlog, actually a list of uh, items uh, which product owner and the team are created to be able uh, to complete uh, the uh, work. Uh, during the sprint, we have uh, meetings and uh, ceremonies. So for example, we have a stand-up meeting where people, the team are gathered together with a time box frame, no more than 15 minutes to update each other on the progress and answering the questions, uh, what I did yesterday, what I'm planning to do today, and what's more important, if I have any impediments on my way. And this is a Scrum Master role, and I will show it in the next slide on how to resolve the impediments and to make sure that the team is moving and have no blockers on their way and just to keep delivering. And at the end of the sprint, we have a review where we show the potentially achievable product increment to our clients, solicit feedback, as I already said. And at the end, we have a retrospective where we are looking back at the sprint and brainstorming what we've done well and want to continue doing and what we could do better and obviously not blaming each other, just collaborate and improve continuously. And you know, no matter how good we are today, there is always room for improvement, no matter how experienced you are. I've been an agile coach and I retrospect for myself because I don't have a team to retrospect with. So we might retrospect with the other coaches if we have many coaches in the organization. And I also retrospect just being a coach for myself to see what I can do better next time. So if you guys have a retrospective and identifying lots of items on how you can be better, it's good. It's not bad. It means you are having agile mindset and you are ready to improve and to serve your customers better and to be a better teammates for each other. Now, this is briefly about Scrum framework. And I delivered a full webinar more than one hour last time about Scrum. So if you want to watch it, it's on my YouTube channel and I will post the links later after I finish presenting. And to move on, so Scrum in a nutshell. For those who are here in the first time, it's gonna be difficult to memorize what I just said about the previous slide. So this one is a simple way. So the first, in Scrum, you split your organization into small teams. 
normally a pizza size, so no more than 14 people, but uh, a scrum prescribes it's going to be like three to nine people officially, but you can see like 10, uh, 14 people, no more in scrum teams if you join like any other organizations. But the point is to split your organization into smaller teams. Also, we are not just splitting organization, we are splitting the work into concrete uh, deliverables. We also split our time into short interactions, as I told you, from one to four weeks. We optimize our release plan and update uh, priorities. And we also optimize the process by having a retrospective. So this is a Scrum in a nutshell. Now, similar slide, but about the Kanban. So Kanban in a nutshell, what it means. It means in Kanban, we improve collaboratively and evolve experimentally. Uh, managing flow is the key point in uh, Kanban, managing flow and also limit work in uh, progress. We are implementing feedback loops and we make our work visual. Now, these are five main items about uh, Kanban. We are improving collaboratively, we limit work in progress, we are managing flow, we implement feedback loops, and we visualize the work and make it as uh, transparent as uh, possible. And I see the comment about the presentation slides. Uh, yes, I will share my slides uh, to each of you who will message me on LinkedIn or privately by email, uh, or whatever you guys uh, prefer. So I would know who I need to send because I didn't capture your emails. So if you want the slides, I will guaranteed message you after this webinar. So how Scrum and uh, Kanban relates to each other. And I know people who just start practicing Agile or Scrum or Kanban, they mostly like do Agile rather than be Agile. So the first they ask me is about uh, metrics or additional tools, but that's why I have this funny slide. It's not to offend someone. It's just uh, to have fun and emphasize that if uh, you uh, don't uh, have Agile mindset, you're going to be still like a full uh, having multiple tools, but Scrum and uh, Kanban are process tools. They are frameworks to help you to work more effectively and to help your team to work more effectively and um, deliver the product uh, continuously. Now let's sketch uh, closer what are the similarities and the differences between Scrum and uh, Kanban. So, First of all, Scrum prescribes roles and iterations. Um, for example, the Scrum roles are the uh, product owner, the uh, Scrum master, and um, the uh, Scrum team. And it doesn't mean that in uh, Kanban, you don't have to have these roles, but uh, in a Scrum, it's mandatory. In Kanban, it's uh, optional. But if you don't know where, when, where to start if you do the Kanban the first time, you might adopt this uh, Scrum roles uh, to Kanban and there is no harm about it. And product owner, again, you might have a product owner in uh, Scrum, uh, but um, if you feel like you might not need a product owner or a Scrum master in uh, Kanban, Again, it's uh, uh, totally fine if you avoid one of the roles. As I told, uh, managing flow and to limiting work in uh, progress uh, is um, way more important in uh, Kanban than just following the rules and uh, having appropriate roles. So iterations. As we talked about uh, Scrum, uh, we had uh, one to four weeks iterations uh, where the team needs to deliver the shippable piece of product at the end. In uh, Kanban, you maintain your own iterations. It uh, would be on demand or it could be uh, one week or like uh, different each time. It's uh, up to you guys. So you might feel like um, Kanban is uh, more chaotic and uh, that's why many people who are not familiar with this uh, framework kind of resistant to implement it and lean to Scrum more. But um, 
again, it, if uh, Kanban is not prescribed something, it doesn't mean you don't have to have it. If you don't know where to start, you might adopt uh, some uh, Scrum uh, prescriptions, but then uh, figure out on the fly and change and uh, experiment. So let's talk about uh, Scrum Master skills uh, a little bit before we move on, uh, talking about the uh, teams. So Scrum Master is a very important role in um, Scrum because this person helps remove impediments. So this is the main attribute of their role to make sure that the team is working without any blockers on their way. But also Scrum Master needs to know about agile and different framework and play agile coaching role for their team sometimes. And here you might have a question, so what is the difference between UI and Agile coach and a Scrum master who is doing Agile coaching as well? The difference is uh, an Agile coach uh, working with uh, stakeholders, uh, mostly and organizational leaders, and also supervise uh, multiple teams simultaneously, just observing and um, working with uh, Scrum masters and uh, helping Scrum masters to be better in their roles and uh, be better coaches. Whereas a Scrum Master might have up to two teams and coach their teams specifically and in a deeper level and mostly not collaborate with their stakeholders. Now, tool maintenance. Since we worked online, we started having more and more tools compared to when we worked in the office. So, for example, we moved all of our meetings to Zoom. We use Jira to maintain our tickets. We use the Miro board to embrace collaboration. So Scrum Master needs to know about the tools and how to maintain it and also suggest different tools. And for example, the retrospective, we want to have fun during the retro. So how can we have fun just being pictured on Zoom? So the result is there are like multiple online games and if uh, the Scrum Master is uh, passionate about their role, they might uh, Google some online games and introduce it to the team. So constantly look for new, better tools and to know how to maintain them. Facilitator, one of the most important attributes of the Scrum Master role uh, as well. Being a good facilitator because you need to embrace creativity by starting the discussion and asking powerful questions and not provide the solution yourself. And this is a trick when a Scrum Master came from the development perspective, because you might see the solution from the technological side and be eager to help your team, having the very good intentions, but you need to embrace your team to take responsibility for the solution and also brainstorm and figure out uh, the best solution. So if you just uh, dictate them the solution, they would be just waiting for someone else who would uh, tell them uh, what to do rather than being self-organized individuals. A communicator, there's lots of uh, problems between uh, team members, uh, between the members from like, different teams, and also be sometimes between uh, stakeholders uh, themselves. So you need to be a good communicator and to read uh, the room to see uh, what is uh, happening, who is um, open to new ideas, uh, who is against and why, and uh, what is the history behind uh, this uh, communication uh, between different people and be able to resolve uh, the uh, conflict and uh, communicate the uh, solution and focusing on the solution rather than each other. Also team support, sometimes we need to be cheerleaders to praise the team, to take the team out to, to make sure that they maintain a good mood. And uh, when people are in the good mood, it means they are not uh, burning out. So team support is also one of the important roles. Shield the team from the stakeholders, from the constant changing requirements. Yes, we are welcome change as I told you before, but we also don't want to turn into chaos. That's why 
If the change is introduced by the stakeholders, it comes to a product owner or to a scrum master, and then they bring it to the team. And reporting, uh, unfortunately, we still have to report, especially in the large uh, enterprises, to make sure that uh, stakeholders uh, have the right information in the right time. But I, I would say, an experienced Scrum Master needs to get away from reporting and uh, keep concentrating on information radiators uh, instead. Um, another difference, Kanban limits uh, a work in progress per workflow state and Scrum limits work in progress per iteration. So you see a Scrum board and you see a Kanban board. And I am just curious if someone can tell me what is the difference between these two boards? What do you think, guys? I could give it a shot. Yeah, go ahead. With the Scrum board, I would think that, like you said on the slide, that it's limit for iteration. Like you only do the work that's in that iteration. Mm -hmm. But with, Kan, with Kanban, it's a different system. So you're pulling work into the different swim lanes as, the, as there's availability for it. So the two on top of ongoing, on, at the bottom of ongoing is your whip limit. So that tells you that you cannot pull any other work item into that swim lane and, unless you have space to accommodate two items. And that's all you can have in that lane. But... Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I see off the bat. Yeah, brilliant, Andrea. So you might see that there is like number two on the ongoing column. And this is the only one visual difference. I see the comment in Kanban, there could be simultaneous ongoing items. So in Scrum, we are limiting work per iteration. So it means we might have multiple like 10, 15, whatever tickets we have in the ongoing phase. And at the end of the iterations, most of them, ideally all of them, but in reality, most of them are going to the done column. Whereas in Kanban, if we decided that we are limiting work in progress to two items. So there could be no more than two items in the ongoing column. So somebody still can pull the C task to the ongoing and it means we are reaching the uh, maximum. We can't pull D if we have B and C in the ongoing column. Compared to Scrum, we can pull B, C and D to the ongoing column and just uh, make sure that they're gonna be done at the end. Uh, sorry. So the other thing is uh, we also limit our uh, to do column in uh, Kanban. So if we decided uh, that it's going to be like 10 items in our to do column, it means we can't uh, pull them uh, from the backlog. We can, but it means we need to constantly prioritize. So, for example, if I want to pull the item E to our Kanban to-do column, I need to reprioritize it with the C or D. So it means that I need to move out one of these items to pull E there. In Scrum, the time box iteration, which is sprint, is sacred. So if we plan to deliver A, B, C, D during the sprint, and we can't pull anything else, neither E or F or whatever, until we finish the sprint. And if you see that in your environment, uh, the priorities changes so often and you need to, to pull items uh, to your to-do list during the sprint, so maybe Scrum is not uh, the best uh, approach to you. Maybe you need to, to switch to Kanban because here the priorities changes all the time. You just uh, have to prioritize uh, based on the uh, frequency of uh, changing uh, priorities. And the recommendation, if uh, you are not experiencing either on Scrum or uh, Kanban, don't make it uh, complex already. If you're not sure what kind of columns you wanna have 
just make it simple. Just make a to do in progress or going and uh, done. In future, you might uh, figure out uh, that uh, you will need uh, other columns uh, such as um, PO review, product owner review, or released or uh, blocked or tested or whatever columns uh, work for your team. But if you start uh, making it uh, complicated uh, without uh, figuring out the basics, very soon you will find yourself on the middle picture, like I'm showing like large enterprises uh, processes. So you need to start simple. You need to start like the first picture individual project. And uh, then eventually you will move to the uh, third one, trying to skip the second one. But if you start at the second one right away, creating uh, multiple boards, uh, multiple uh, columns on the boards, uh, multiple uh, processes, uh, reporting systems. You, know, you wouldn't know how to get away with that in the next couple of months. So you will need to, to invite a consultant or a coach from the other side, meaning the additional costs for your organization and the product or a project. And eventually with having very painful approach uh, while we're going to change uh, the consultant or agile coach uh, will uh, help you to reach the uh, third stage so uh, again highly recommend to start as simple as, as possible and then add the uh, complexity rather than dealing uh, what to do with this uh, complexity in a couple of months when you just uh, started now as i told you scrum resists uh, change within an interaction so if you want to, to pull new items uh, to your to-do column, you need to wait uh, when the sprint uh, is uh, going to end and then plan the uh, next uh, iteration. So Scrum team will only commit to items that they think they can complete within one iteration based on their definition of done. And then Kanban, so Kanban teams try to minimize lead time and level the flow. So they indirectly create an intensive to break items into relatively small pieces. There is no explicit rule that uh, stating that items must be small enough to fit into a specific time box. And this is also an important um, item to uh, talk about. We need to, to break our work into smaller chunks from smaller pieces. And for not experienced teams, it's going to be a problem because they used to work in a waterfall when they had a work breakdown structure, they have um, the implementation dates and they know, for example, they need to implement once in three months or even like once in the four months or six months. So they keep doing work and there is like lots of work in progress. So they don't break work into smaller chunks. And when you start teaching them and coaching that they need to break uh, work into smaller pieces, they are very resistant uh, because they don't see the value. And this is where a scrum master is coming as a coach and uh, a coach is coming to the team if the team is uh, very resistant to break the work. But also what's important, uh, like for us leaders who never coded, we just can come and say, hey team, you need to break the work in, into smaller pieces. But the team might not even know how they need to, to do it. So in this case, uh, if um, you have some uh, product or technical background, you might bring them the suggestions. But again, being a coach, it's not uh, giving the suggestion to people. It's ask a powerful uh, question, but also making sure that uh, there are a right uh, people in the room. So maybe there are other teams who already went through this process or there is a very experienced uh, developer or a team lead uh, somewhere who is technical and uh, who can uh, figure out uh, the different approaches on how to split uh, the work. So I might say that uh, coaching uh, the team uh, how to split uh, the work into a smaller chunks it could be a painful process and the team might insist to have a larger interactions like three, four, and sometimes even go over four weeks because they have fear that they won't be able to complete the work on time. But um, the experience shows it's uh, possible 
to break the work into smaller pieces. It's just we couldn't figure out how to do it and encourage the team that failing, it's okay, fail fast is uh, one of the uh, basic agile principles. Let's just fail fast a couple of iterations and then we will figure out uh, how to break uh, the work into smaller pieces. And also one more thing, we can encourage the team to fail fast, but they need to feel safe uh, to do this because some organizations are also resistant to change. And unfortunately the agile implementation is going from uh, bottom to up rather than up uh, to rather than top down. So again, we need to coach leaders at the same time we are coaching teams and telling the leaders that the team is going to fail because they are figuring out the approach and it's better to fail right now when we start it than fail in the middle of our journey. But that's what's mean being agile and no matter what approach you will choose or what framework, Scrum or Kanban, you still need to break the work into pieces. You still need to maintain the flow and you need to, to limit your work in progress. Now, another difference is Scrum prescribes estimation and uh, a velocity. And in Kanban, estimation is not prescribed. So you need to make commitments. So you need uh, to, describe, to, to decide how to provide predictability. And uh, some teams choose to make estimates and to measure velocity just like in Scrum, which is fun, fine, especially if you are new to Kanban, you can adopt uh, many items from Scrum and kind of do Kanban, but uh, the other teams might choose to skip estimation and uh, try to break each item into pieces or roughly the same size so they can measure velocity simply in terms of how many items uh, were completed per unit of time. And for those who are new to Agile and you don't know what I mean by talking about velocity, uh, velocity is uh, not the hourly estimation. We estimate uh, a work uh, by choosing a Fibonacci number, which is one, two, three, five, eight, uh, 13, and uh, further. But um, we won't recommend going after 13 because it means uh, the work is going to be too huge. So, how we figure out the number? We estimate relatively. So, we just look at our work and uh, see if uh, something is uh, a large item to work or something is a smaller one. So again, as a website example, if I want to change a header, it's gonna be probably one, the smallest task, the smallest story, or even like even a task we don't need to estimate. Or if I want to change a homepage, it's gonna be a huge amount of work, meaning complexity as well included. So eventually by redesigning a homepage, this could be split up into like smaller chunks of work, meaning a smaller number of uh, a velocity. So velocity is just like a measurement of uh, the effort required to work, not the hours required. So if uh, still it's uh, not clear, I will have another webinar and I also have paid training just related to velocity and estimation. So don't be scared, just learn this agile jargon, the word velocity, and you will figure out it later. So the similarities of Scrum and Kanban. So first, both are under the agile umbrella. Both are pool scheduling. Both limit work in progress. Both are focusing on delivering releasable software early and uh, often. Both are based on self-organizing teams. Both require breaking the work into pieces and release plan is continuously optimized based on metrics such as velocity and lead time. So it's definitely these are not all, but for the high level knowledge of Scrum and Kanban, these are the main ones and I believe this is enough for today's webinar. And definitely the differences of Scrum and Kanban. So, the first one, we kept talking time box iterations prescribed in Scrum and in Kanban time box iterations are optional. So it can be event driven instead of time boxed. The next one, team commits to a specific amount of work for this iteration 
And in Kanban, the commitment is optional. Velocity, what we've been just uh, talking about, uses velocity in Scrum as default metric for planning and process improvement. And in Kanban, we use the lead time as default metric for planning and process improvement. In Scrum, items must be broken down so they can be completed within one sprint. And in Kanban, no particular item size is prescribed. Estimation is prescribed in Scrum and optional in Kanban. In Scrum, we cannot add items on ongoing iteration. We need to wait until the sprint is over. And in Kanban, we can add new items whenever capacity is available. Scrum prescribes three roles, product owner, Scrum master, and the team. And Kanban doesn't prescribe any roles. And Scrum board is reset between each sprint. And Kanban board is persistent, so you don't need to reset it quite often. And so the uh, last slide on this topic is uh, constructing the first board. So you might hear the jargon cycle time. So I just wanted to show you what uh, cycle time actually means. Oops. So uh, for example, if we find a bug, so it takes two minutes to call it into report. Then while we are waiting on the phone, it takes us other five minutes, for example. Then we enter this report, which takes us the other five minutes. Then we need to wait the process time, like three business days normally. Then we will try to uh, recreate and wait for the uh, developer, let's say, for another month. Then finally, we are working it uh, to fix, which takes just two days. And then we need to wait for a release window, which let's say another two weeks. And finally, we are releasing the bug, uh, which takes us uh, half of the day. So we are calculating the uh, value added uh, time, which is uh, three and a half days, but the uh, total time is uh, 33 days. So for example, one month we, we had to, to wait, we didn't do a, a, any work. So we don't uh, have any value or like waiting for release. Again, we are not bringing in any value, we are just uh, waiting. So the cycle time is uh, just 11%. Uh, and uh, again, working in uh, Kanban, we try to increase uh, this amount of uh, percent and um, maximize the value added time and minimize the time which doesn't bring us the value. So this is about the cycle time. And I would like to recommend you a book, Kanban and Scrum, making the most of both. So I used this picture from the book and this is one of the best books I've read about Kanban and Scrum. It's super engaging, it's fun, and you can read it just in one day and understand on the high level and also consist the case study actually showing the team who tried to implement Kanban and the struggles they faced. So if you don't know about their book or their website, again, I will share you in the comments when I finish presenting, but highly recommend to dig deeper into this book and their website if you want to know more details. And the event I'm going to hold, so the nearest one is the Get the Dream Job. We are going to talk about resume crafting in general and specifically to the role in Agile, such as product owner, a scrum master, or project manager. So if you, I didn't sign up for this event uh, yet. Uh, it's on my LinkedIn page and I will share the link. So it's going to be in two weeks on Saturday, again, my, May 28th. And just uh, briefly about uh, my book related to the uh, career. So I launched a book uh, this uh, spring and it calls It Starts With You, How to Get Going in Your Career. So if you are looking for a new job or if you're scared of the interview process or how to answer the questions or how to craft the resume and build your brand on LinkedIn or even like to know where to start when you want to pivot to IT or just like look for a new job as uh, general, you can find this book on uh, LinkedIn. And also 
I am not earning any money of this uh, this year because I am donating to people who lost their shelter in Ukraine. If you follow the news, you know what is uh, happening in my country. And um, as a loyal Ukrainian, I feel like I need to, to support people who are in the way worse situation that um, I am. So you want to have just value. You will also do a good thing by supporting uh, people who are in such a horrible situation right now. Now the reviews about the book and uh, basically we are done. So now it's time for a Q&A session and uh, I will stop sharing my screen to find uh, the links to be able to share with you right now.